So today we're going to create and build our own air conditioner. To do this, I picked up a fan, and this is a it's a heavy duty uh, fan. It's got a steel cage, aluminum blades on it. Picked it up at a local Menard store. It was I don't know twenty nine dollars, twenty four or twenty nine. I can't really remember. But anyway, um, this is a twenty inch oscillating fan, obviously. Uh, will not oscillate left and right, but I can adjust the, the pitch of it up and down. And it's a tabletop unit. I was going to get a stand unit, but um, the ones that I thought would be heavy enough to do that started about $90, and I decided not to do that. I'll just go with a tabletop unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this fan together. Then, around the outside of the grill, I'm going to wrap this 3 8 inside diameter copper tubing around it. I'm going to use a bunch of zip ties to put it into place. So with the two lines running around, then I'll have an intake and an outtake for water. One of those lines is going to hook into this 158 gallon per hour submersible water pump. This one is designed for fountains and typical outdoor type applications although it could be used in a fairly large aquarium. This is a Creekstone submersible fountain pump, 158 gallons per minute, correction, per hour. Um, little water pump. What I will do then is I will take the water pump and drop it into a cooler, and then that cooler is going to have ice water in it. And what this will do then is it will pump up one of these lines, go through the copper tubing, all around that fan blade and then with the other line it'll go back to the cooler so I'm creating kind of a closed system um, got the idea from some of the Burning Man videos online seen several other people since then have made these and I thought I would give this a try and share it with you guys okay YouTube got the fan out of the box this is an extreme garage fan is the actual name on it the other thing I forgot to mention is some hose clamps we will need these to secure this line to the copper tubing. So, all together I pulled the fan out and the fan shield itself is attached to the fan um, via a bunch of little screws. So I think I'm going to try to put the copper tubing on this without removing this outside screen. Okay YouTube, here we are. I put my first tie in here and actually, I don't like the way I've done that. So I think I'm going to remove this one. Set that off to the side. What I'm trying to do is just come through that, the support post and these rings. And then tie this thing down to it. Get this out of the way for a second. Put a little bend in that. And I should be able to just feed this back up and through here. Now I like that a little bit better. Just going to give it a little more security. I'm going to have the intake and hopefully the exit come out along the bottom. So now the trick is going to be to unwind the copper tubing and have it go all the way around the outside here without putting any kinks in it. Okay, YouTube, here we are. We've got the coil all zip tied on. Now, the dikes we spoke of earlier are going to come in pretty handy. But yeah, that's going to make that look really good all the way around. I'll get the rest of this cleaned up and we'll get it put together. And then what we'll do is, we'll, like I said, we'll put it together, we'll run it, and we'll see if it makes a bunch of noise. Stay with me. Okay, YouTube, here we are. There are supports on the fan here. Every other one from where I've put a zip tie. If it turns out that it makes a lot of noise, I'll add more zip ties. i got to tell you what, that is somewhat tedious. Um, you know, getting that to go down through the fan up the other side and then being able to secure it to this. Um, a little bit different. I 
my hands are cramping. But anyway, initial shaking test, well, there's no vibration in anything other than the fan blades. Got it plugged in back behind me here. It's got a rheostat switch. Let's start it off on low. Wow, does that thing move some air? Okay, that's the highest setting. Absolutely zero, and I mean zero rattle. <laughs> okay, I think that's gonna work out pretty good. Now, on the bottom I've got this tube line running right here. And then I couldn't, you know, bring it back and, and made it up perfectly, but I've got the, the exhaust or the return line coming out the same way. Then what I'll do is I'll put these hoses on it here. I'll use the little hose clamps to secure it. Then as it kind of wraps around, and I think what I'll do is I'll have the lines wrap around back behind it. I'll zip tie those together just to make it look neat. We've got everything hooked up. we got it all set up around the fan here. Let's see if I can... I have to scrunch this up because it catches onto it. But right here I put the hose clamps with that uh, half inch in diameter, inside diameter hose here. Um, so it's all connected. We've got the clamps on it here. This thing's got some pretty aggressive feed on it. So this is up my couch. I have, or my tabletop rather. I've put some zip ties around here, probably four foot or so, maybe a little bit more. And I've left the ends long because I don't know yet for sure how long I need to make this. So, with that being there, I've got my cooler. You just heard it land on the cooler. Now, let's get this pump out. Make sure you don't lose any of the parts and pieces here. And the reason I say that is because it does have a couple of adapters here. So, we need to get one end of our hose. And see, this has... This is our little pump right here. It also has a rheostat here on the bottom that shows um, whether you've got maximum, you can adjust the amount of flow for this. Get glasses on here. So that's on full high and this would be on minimum. For our application today, I'm gonna to definitely put that on high. It appears as though the water then is going to be brought in via these vents and fan openings here. Then on the top, you can use this piece. Yeah, it's pretty tight that way. But let's see how big our opening is. The smallest one, she's a little too tight. And if I put that piece in this way, this has got to go over this. That is going to be a chore because that's a different diameter size. Okay guys, we put about four inches of water in there. We'll reinstall our pump. It's doing a mighty fine job there. The water is currently, looks to be about, I don't know, 71 and a half degrees. I'm hoping you guys can see that. 71.6 degrees there. See that in the shadow. So we've got that installed. Now we've got our return line down in there as well now. And that does not necessarily have to be submerged. Break up the bag of ice, dump it down in. Now, we'll give that a few minutes to get cold, and then I think I've got an idea on how to test and quantify whether this thing puts out cold air. Stay with me, and I'll get everything set up. Okay, guys. What I've done is I've set the fan up at one end of the table. At the other end of the table, I've got this little Volkswagen. Come around here so you can see it. Little piece of tin. 
So what I'm going to do then is I'll shoot the temperature of this. This appears to be 78.2 degrees. Hopefully you guys will be able to see that. So, now the ice water is showing that it is about 40 degrees down there. Okay, 42.4. So, now what we're going to do is find an extension cord. And once I get that squared away, we'll get this plugged in and we'll watch the water go through the tube. Okay, now I've got the pump set up. If I plug it in, it's going to start to work. We should see water come in, fill this line here, circle through, and then on the return, come back out this way. If not, it'll fill this way and return this way. The pump is running. You can just now see the water going through. There it goes. We're getting good flow. I don't have any complete kinks in there. A couple, maybe one spot here where I need to flatten that out a little. Let's try that. Now you can see on those lines right there that they might be freezing a little bit. The lines on this have definitely started to condensate due to the outside air temperature being close to 80 now and that being about 35 degrees. So let's set this back because it's starting to get warm and it's about 7.30 in the morning. So I'm going to fire up the rheostat here. Now we have this on low. Holy smokes! Man, I can tell you right now, <laughs> that makes a heck of a difference. It's already lowered the 10 by 2 degrees and it's only been 30 seconds. As I look at the copper piping, it is really starting to do some condensation on it now. So it is definitely circulating cold, cold water through that pipe. And then as a result, the air blows over that cool pipe, cools the air off behind it. Yes, this is, this is working out far better than I thought. That is actually significantly cooler. I have to admit, so far I'm impressed. Okay, again, we're down to 76 degrees. We started with that being, what, 78.9, 79, somewhere in there. So it's come down a little bit. Yeah, this is actually working out pretty slick. Now, this is starting to because of the extreme temperature change between the cold water that's coming through it, we're also getting slight evaporation off of the copper tubing. So we're also getting a little bit of a mist in there too. I will say this much, I should have got a 20 pound bag of ice as my seven pound bag has already melted. Hey YouTube, as you can see the fan's winding down, the pump is still running. The copper lines were also spitting out some moisture because of the condensation on them. It has warmed back up. The water is now probably 55, 56 degrees. It does make a big difference. You can certainly feel this. I was trying to quantify it with this little tin thing here, sitting here. Um, it lowered it about 2 degrees when it was on the, the low to medium settings on that, just up front. Some of that may just be friction heat with the air blowing over it. it does happen associated with airplanes at high speeds. Um, 
We took a picture of the, the temperature gauge on the clock. That is on the south side of the building and the sun is up and it's getting hot. So it's getting some heat transfer from the inside of the, uh, or from rather from the outside of the building. It came down about a degree and a half, but at the end, we were at the end, virtually two or three cubes still floating in the water. The water, as I mentioned earlier, had gone all the way up to 51 and a half degrees at that point, started at 35 when we had ice in the cooler. Overall, though, the proof and concept is there. Um, I closed the door on the shop. I went and got my wife, had her come back out. As soon as she opened the door, she remarked at how much cooler it was inside the building itself. It's going to be a hot one today, but with this fan, with a 20-gallon bag or 20-pound bag of ice in that cooler, and um, maybe a little bit less water, I'm not sure how this is going to work. There's going to be some experimentation with it. But overall, guys, proof of concept is out there. It works. It is hard to qualify and or quantify how cool that air is when it's coming off of that, that, that condensed coil there. But hey, if you turn your air conditioner on, same darn thing. But overall, guys, this was an extremely successful experiment. Uh, if you haven't done this or, or tried this yet and you've got $30 laying around, go try this. It's worth it, especially if you've got a shop that does, is not air conditioned. Anyway, guys, thanks for playing along. Remember, keep your heads up, keep your eyes open. We'll see you outside.